from uh, IT and electrical engineering. Uh, so we have a very high nerve factor. And, but we also have uh, a heart surgeon in our group. We have a journalist, a dentist, and you, wouldn't, you would be astonished how well dentists can make antennas. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It's, it's totally amazing. He, he, he invented a um, small antenna, Yagi antenna, looking in, in, into a satellite dish and made it tunable, and he just used his dentist tools for that. <laughs> and uh, of course, it attracts radio amateur folks. Um, and they, they see it as the next logical step, right, from, from amateur radio. And then we're, we're in close cooperation with uh, folks from OpenWRT, so our um, experiences go, go back to OpenWRT. Does every, anybody not know what OpenWRT is? No? Okay. Um, then, um, Branch of the Open w, uh, WRT firmware is it's a, it's a firmware for for a small routers for um, something like this. So this is a you probably know this is a cheap fifty dollar uh, forty dollar phone hotspot router, and we program it with our own software and. Uh, a lot of it is based on OpenWRT, and OpenWRT is like the Swiss army knife of uh, uh, embedded devices. And the Freifunk firmware, where your text is, is, is on, on, on the splash page, um, is just a branch of OpenWRT. Um, we collaborate with the Open Hardware Initiative in Paris. Uh, many of them are in Paris, actually, at the Temp Lab. And of course, the oldest R project, um, open source mesh routing, project became something of its own and very close corporations, of course. Okay, now I think you were also very interested like in the financial su sustainability because when you, when you offer bandwidth for free, where does it come from? Somebody has to pay for it, right? So um, what we did, our solution is um, we had this great space um, really across the street from the Vienna Internet Exchange, so we had bandwidth. Um, and we said, okay, we'll just build our own colo center. So you can see Wolfgang, who is now working at RIPE, um, actually working on the switches while they're operating. Uh, terrible. <laughs> um, so we built three rooms like that. And people can put their servers in there. They will pay a regular fee, a um, little bit below market r uh, rates. So that is cheaper. but. Uh, they, they can host their own stuff there. And the excess bandwidth, that we, we buy bandwidth, and the excess bandwidth um, is put into the, the wireless network. And you would be astonished how little a wireless network actually needs. So for all these nodes, the calculation is very simple. For all these nodes, we need approximately 10 Mbit average. Of course, there are spikes, but the average is 10 Mbit. This is nothing. So uh, the uplink is here, uh, gigabit uh, fiber connection. Um, it's multi-homed. We, we became local internet registry. That means we have public IP addresses. We're officially part of the internet. Um, we're going to write meetings. And yeah, I talked about the Kohler Center. So we prefer projects in the, in the Kohler Center which uh, actually help the internet in the wider sense. Um, so we're very proud of uh, having hosted the uh, Orson project, which is the alternative root server network. Um, so in case the idea is in case the, the root servers become extremely political, there's a second set of root servers for DNS root servers. I don't know if everybody's familiar with that project. But it's, it's pretty interesting. So it's like um, misusing the root servers uh, for political purposes purposes is like a one-shot attempt. The second time, people are going to have root servers in, in places like here. Okay, um, loved by the community is a VoIP server. So that's, this is totally a killer app. People use uh, VoIP over the, the Wi-Fi network. It works. And uh, we have local content, local TV and radio stations hosted in the Colder Center. Is that VoIP service like Skype or Asterisk. 
Um, it's, it's, terminated. it's terminated and it's outgoing also. So we have uh, outgoing calls for free. And it works like that. We have a big pot and, and you know, when you use it a lot, people ditch in 10, 20 euros. And it's, it, it works out financially. It's, it's not really expensive. What about, what about latency in some of your mesh networks? I mean, because yeah. you have different paths. Yes. Yeah, Good question. Um, generally, the, the network quality of the, the Wi-Fi links, we, we try to explain to people how, how to set up proper links. And usually that involves lots of directional antennas um, or panel antennas. And once they set up good links, latency is usually good. But it's really tricky to get it right. So um, there's actually some education involved. Yeah. And if somebody doesn't manage to set up a proper link, he probably will have um, packet loss. That's it. Yeah. So we, we don't we don't come to the, to that person and like an ISP and you know we we won't fix your internet. We will teach you how to fix your own internet connection. That's the difference. And so the, so the stations that you basically have are your only backhauls, and the rest of it is passed around. Node yes. To node. Yes. Actually, we intentionally try to keep the number of nodes that the the association uh, legally uh, owns to minimum. We want to have the ownership out there. But you have other backhaul locations that tie into the regular internet as well. Yeah, the call center is actually the, the handover point. Okay. Yeah. And it, it used to be one point for a long time, and uh, it was. Interesting on the one hand because it was a question of how big we could make a mesh network with OSR with only one uplink. But eventually um, it worked out that we have two and now a third one is coming. And um, this is a slight disadvantage of having public IP space. Because in, in Germany and Athens and everywhere they use private IP space. So they, so they can NAT at every DSL uplink. And um, we have to accept public IP space at certain yes, BGPs, handover sessions. So we need proper gateways. Yes. Yes, um, one, one way to do solve that technically is um, uh, we do employ some uh, wireless bridges in addition to the mesh. So this will bring actually the backbone closer to the, um, to the, the, to the consumers. Yes, yes, yes. Via mailing lists, via uh, meetings, um, we have actually I think now that you mention it, it's one of the most important aspects of the network is actually regular workshops. Yeah. And somebody will just learn BGP and explain it to the rest. Yeah. That's how it works. OK, I talked about the other networks already a bit. Um, I just want to give you a brief impression of the size and the, um, the effect that these networks have. This is the Athens wireless network. And it's just one screenshot, one part of it. Um, so this is really co below it. You, the, there is a city. Here is the, <coughs> the mountain here, and um, below this network is Athens, and they actually hop across islands already, and they're different Greek networks. It's not just the Athens wireless network. It's they have it in, in between islands, and it's, it fits naturally to their uh, geography. You know, have a big um, antenna on the on the on a mountain, on the island, and it will just hop over to the next island. It's, you, you can see, when you're on, the, on top, you can see the other islands, so it's, it fits. It's, it's really, it's totally logical for them to do that. I talked about 